Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Paul Algren. Uh, I work as a security and compliance business acceleration lead for the Nordic and the Baltics. Uh, we thought that that was a bit too complex. We normally call that SECBAT. And uh, it's mostly compliance questions uh, to help customers uh, to utilize the cloud. But anyway, uh, the, I presume that there is a, a different level on experience on AWS uh, with the people in the audience today. So um, AWS uh, that invented the public cloud in 2006 um, today offers, depending on how we count it, between 175 and 250 different services that covers everything from uh, simple uh, basic services like virtual machines and storage and all the way up to uh, uh, satellite infrastructure and uh, automated uh, call centers uh, that that can be deployed in in a matter of minutes so today the, from the cloud you can principally run uh, everything conceivable that you need to run a business and uh, uh, a central part of this and has been from the beginning is uh, security. Uh, just to give you a few ideas is that it's not possible to write code in AWS until you have decided what kind of security the service will have, how it will interact from a security point of view with other services and how it will interact with uh, the world around it. And when that's done, then you can start to write the code. It's not uh, the other way around. Anyway, uh, a little bit about the AWS infrastructure. AWS exists in, uh, we have something we call regions, and this is not the same as regions uh, at our competitors. Uh, we have 24 uh, regions. A region is cluster of clusters of data centers, and we have them spread all around the world, including one here in uh, Sweden. In total, this is something like 250 data centers. And uh, each data center is the size from uh, electric consumption, like uh, a mid-sized uh, Swedish city like Katrineholm, for instance. So between 25 and 40,000 people. The idea with the regions are that they, they are located in a single country. We never move the data out that outside that region, which means is that the customer, if they decide to put the data in Sweden, the data will stay in Sweden. Each region is then divided into availability zones and each availability zone can be one or several data centers uh, that are separated so much that if we lose, for instance, a full town like Katrina Holm, it will not affect customers because their workloads will fail over to the other data centers. And uh, it, it, the data centers uh, will be so far apart that normally uh, they will not be affected. While that they cannot be further apart than that we have about one to two milliseconds of latency between them. So there is a limit on how far between we can have the data centers. And anything you know about data centers and how they're built, you can principally forget because there isn't any standard equipment in these data centers. Uh, everything is custom built. And one of the things that is special is that we virtualize in hardware with specially specialized uh, chips that we have created called Nitro. Uh, we, from a security point of view, it's also important to know that as soon as AWS loses control of the, the uh, network traffic or the traffic, uh, we encrypt, which means that all the tra traffic that goes in the, the AWS backbone is encrypted, all the tra traffic between the data center is encrypted, and if you use the Nitro uh, virtualization, engine that which principally every server after 2018 uses uh, it will also all traffic in and out will be automatically encrypted to ensure that that uh, 
the blast radius gets as small as possible. We also have uh, uh, what we say defense in depth when it comes to security, and that is when we have a number of layers uh, when traffic comes in where you have control, everything from the VPC, which is the, the isolated network part uh, that each customer has control over. Uh, it goes to uh, that, that uh, every subnet has route tables and uh, every uh, machine is part of a security group and the security group is, can see, you can see it as an individual firewall that sits in front of that particular virtual machine. Uh, in addition to this, we have things like yep, DDoS protection through AWS Shield if you're using web services. Uh, we have web application firewalls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that, that helps you uh, secure the environments where you run AWS. And when you work in the cloud uh, uh, and, and with the AWS cloud, uh, there is a shared responsibility model when it comes to security. AWS is, uh, is responsible for the security of the cloud. We do uh, everything like seeing that everything from the premises, the routines, the networks, the storage, the databases, everything is secured and controlled by us. But as soon as you start resources in AWS, the responsibility is yours to, to uh, stay secure. We do not leave you alone. There are more than 50 different services in the security area that will help you. But it is a shared responsibility between you as a customer and us as AWS to create a secure environment. And these services, uh, here are a few of them. Uh, covers everything around uh, security and and governance and monitoring and and uh, uh, encryption and all these things that you need to create an environment and I'm not going to because I'm very very short today I'm not going to go through these but one of the very interesting trends and that is actually why it's called that take the guesswork out of security uh, is that there is a lot of machine learning coming in uh, into uh, the security realm, realm right now. And we have services um, like Amazon Macy that can see and detect if files do uh, have uh, personalized information in them or not so that you can act from a security point of view on the file. You can act differently if you know that that there is personalized information in it or not. We have uh, a product called Guard Duty. Guard Duty looks for anomalies in, in logs and, and uh, can detect things like uh, that traffic suddenly comes from uh, another direction than it has before, that you get traffic pikes, uh, peaks on, on the wrong hours of the day compared to what you normally have, etc. So uh, you Nowadays, with the services uh, that is coming out now, you get a lot of help to, to help you raise the security bar. And we also have products like AWS Config, which help you do continuous security, which means that you set up security guardrails and they are mon monitored in real time. And if something goes outside the guardrail, which is break of rules, uh, you can you get an alarm through a service called CloudWatch, and you can act on it and and um, uh, immediately. For instance, an example I normally take is that it's very easy to connect uh, your uh, to your ticketing system. So you can, for instance, when somebody tries to access uh, a machine you can actually check in your ticketing system, is there an open ticket on this particular machine? And is the individual that just have changed the security to access the machine, is that individual assigned to the ticket? If not, you can lock it down and you can alert to security. It's a, it's a quite exciting new way of working that I, I really uh, find quite enjoyable. Uh, 
anyway, uh, to get to the end of this, before we get into to the four city um, services that will help you with threat detection, um, AWS works a lot with compliance and with, with compliance organizations around the world. And in total, we uh, are compliant with more than 200 uh, different security frameworks and standards. Uh, AWS is audited about 3,000 times a year um, to comply. Uh, and these reports are available for our customers. Um, there, there are things here that we, we can also, it's not, we, we say for instance, that we do not access customer data. And that is easy to say for us, but it's actually proven in a number of these reports uh, by third party auditors. So, so that, that uh, you don't have to take our word for the thing that we do not access individual customer data uh, in, when using the AWS services. A little thing I would like to make a plug on before we continue, this is the last slide for me, is that uh, we have taken a stance of, of trying to improve uh, security with most of our customers, with all our customers. Uh, and these are 10 low hanging fruits. I'm not going to go into them in details today. I'm just showing you the link at the bottom of the page. It's a blog post I recommend that you read if you work with AWS. I recommend that you read and uh, read this. And if you haven't done the 10 things you see uh, on the screen here, I definitely recommend that you uh, see to it that you do all these 10. This is the te top 10 security items we think that you could use to improve. Uh, improve your security in in the AWS cloud. But um, that is just a little short introduction to to security on on um, AWS. Mm -hmm.